Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. When you invest in the stock market, gains and losses are usually expressed as percentage gains and percentage losses. But how exactly do all these percentages work out? Let's see how you do on a simple money test. Suppose a stock decreases 10% in year one and increases by 10% in year two. The stock does not pay any dividends. Is the stock's final value more than, equal to, or less than its initial value? Here, value is referring to nominal value. You don't have to worry about inflation. Question two. This is the same question, except the stock decreases 50% in year one and increases by 50% in year two. Is the stock's final value more than, equal to, or less than its initial value? I want you to give both of these questions a try, and when you're ready, I'm going to explain what the correct answers are and what the common mistake is most people make. Both of these questions appeared in a study, Downside Financial Risk is Misunderstood. One question appeared at the beginning of the questionnaire, and the other question appeared at the end, so they were not just side by side as I presented them. 981 adults in the United States participated in one of the experiments, and here's how they did. 50.8% did not answer either question correctly. 15.3% answered one question correctly, but got the other wrong. This is a little bit weird because they're both logically equivalent. Only 33.9% got both of the questions correct. So looking at the results, 66.1% missed at least one question. So what were they doing wrong? Here's how many people approached the problem. They thought a 50% loss plus a 50% gain would cancel out to be equal to its initial value. But the correct answer is you would lose money. Let's work out an example to see why this is true. Let's say you are investing $100. A 50% loss will be a loss of $50, leaving you with $50. Then you gain 50% on that, which will be $25. So that means 50 plus 25 gives you a final value of $75. That is less than its initial value. And that's the correct answer. Now this is an example with 50%, but the same will be true if we work it out with 10%. Your $100, you would lose 10%, which is $10, leaving you with $90. You gain 10% on the $90, which will be $9, and 90 plus 9 is equal to a final value of $99, which is less than the initial value. So again, the correct answer is less than the initial value. In fact, the same logic will hold in general. Let's replace 10% with P% percent, and we will represent P% percent as a number that's a decimal between 0 and 1. If you start out with an initial value of 1, then a P% percent loss will be the same as multiplying by 1 minus P. Then if you follow that with a P% percent gain, you multiply that by 1 plus P to give a final value of 1 minus P multiplied by 1 plus P, which is equal to 1 minus P squared, and that is less than 1. So you will end up with a less than the initial value. Now here, we have a decrease followed by an increase, but we can even switch these two, so we have an increase followed by a decrease, and since multiplication is commutative, we still end up that the final value is less than the initial value. In general, here's a chart that shows the percentage gain to return to an initial value. If you have a 50% loss, you will need a 100% gain to return to the initial value. So percentage loss as an absolute number will be much worse for your portfolio than a percentage gain. And that's a money mistake you don't want to make. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.